So we had an idea that a lot of people have done coral restoration, but we wanted to introduce the human element, the livelihood enhancement aspect that works towards community development, uh, utilizing um, resources such as tourism um, to actually help fund these processes. Every year, uh, we at the Sandals Foundation, like I said, which is the uh, philanthropic arm of, of Sandals Resorts International, look for projects, viable projects, uh, that we could uh, sponsor uh, when it comes to the environment, education, and, and our people. Uh, and this program, which is the Coral Nursery Dive Program, uh, was very important when Clare Caribbean decided that it's something that they wanted to uh, basically initiate. The Sandals Foundation, with open arms, decided to sponsor that program. One of the ways that we looked at introducing the human element was the development of a national vocational qualification in coral restoration. This was aimed at enhancing the livelihood and education of members of the communities, uh, mainly fishing communities in St. Lucia. And we have been working with a fishing community in Soufre in the marine management area in St. Lucia. We've got about right now six, seven coral gardeners working with us that we have trained. Um, five of them are open water divers that we've trained to become uh, certified divers so that they could help out with our coral nursery work. Uh, they're actually uh, enjoying the process. Not only do they enjoy the um, understanding and also the knowledge that they get from um, actually becoming coral gardeners to learn about the coral and to learn about how it grows, but also they do have a stipend that they are quite pleased with that they're receiving on a monthly basis as they help out with the coral. And um, the bottom line is with them, we've spoken to them and um, seeing the way that they're reacting to it. Uh, they're looking forward to seeing the future benefits of it, especially with the children, because you have uh, third generation fishermen who are involved in the coral gardeners. And so uh, they would very much like to see their children um, impacted in the future with the fish that they're able to be able to sustain themselves and their families. I got involved in the coral respiration because of Mr. Newton. And that's one of the best things that ever happened to St. Lucia. The corals, the corals restoration, building the reef back, and when we have reef, we'll have more fish. More, more tourists will come to enjoy our reef, the fishers will have much better catches, so everybody will benefit from the coral. Before being a coral gander, I was a restaurant supervisor on an estate. I got into the business by my brother, Max. He told me about it, and I heard people talking about the ocean and I really wanted to see the beauty of the ocean so I wanted the experience on my own so I got a call from the fisheries and they asked me whether or not I wanted to be part of a of the coral gardener and I said yes I got certified during the program which was a good thing I really really loved the first time I went I loved it and I wanted to continue and I realized that was my passion and I felt in love with it being a member of the Coral Restoration Project is very wonderful because first thing is first, you gotta learn how to swim, you gotta be certified to be planting your corals. And it doesn't come easy, you gotta, it's hard work. It's not any, any boy that can be doing this kind of stuff. That's why a lot of people don't want to do it. And through that, being a certified person right now there in the Coral Restoration Project, I learned a lot. I learned how to plant the trees, anchor them to the, soil, to, to the ground, to the sun, and how to populate them give that small coral growth and then watch it grow after and clean the trees as well. And I learned how to outplant. That means create your own coral reef and that's, a, that's the most important part because a lot of people don't even know. So sometimes, right now, I'm, I'm doing that. Sometimes my children and my children are going to be enjoying it. The National Vocational Qualification um, involved a variety of things. But one of the key aspects is that currently, one is, is at the level of an associate degree. And this gives the coral gardeners who have been qualified in this uh, NVQ the ability to move throughout the region as this national vocational qualification has now 
being approved as a CARICOM vocational qualification. Now, we see this as a very important step in providing additional life to this project because we foresee that the National Vocational Qualification will have a life way beyond the, the life of our um, intervention. Um, so right now in the beautiful um, town of Sufre, uh, a, a nursery, a coral nursery is located in that area, right next to this dive site called the Pinnacles. And uh, it's in the shallow water, it's between 25 to 30 feet of water. And what we've done there uh, is we have created some trees and some beds uh, where the fragments, which is taken from other uh, key points around the island, the smaller fragments is uh, put in a certain area down on that coral nursery so that it grows over time. And when it grows over time, when it has come to the age of maturity for transplanting, then we here on the ground, who are the instructors, we uh, encourage our guests to be a part of this program and we take, basically take our guests down and teach them how to transplant that, these fragments onto the real life uh, coral, which is actually very, very exciting for them. At this point, um, we're actually taking it a step further where we are writing this um, coral nursery dive transplanting process as a PADI specialty. And what's happening right now is once that specialty is approved by PADI, we can teach that specialty in depth uh, basically doing a lot of scientific, teaching a lot of scientific knowledge. Um, there's a manual that we would give our guests and then when they're done reading that manual, we would do a knowledge, and re knowledge review portion of that uh, course and then we would take them out on our boats and take them down to do some coral transplanting. And they're very excited about that. We have um, a vibrant dive tourism uh, initiative which the corals are quite pivotal for sustaining dive tourism. Um, a lot of the corals um, across St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean suffered significantly from wide band disease. And in fact, there is another disease, which is the uh, tissue loss disease of the hard corals, which has already been discovered in St. Thomas, and that potentially can reduce the genetic or erode the genetic diversity of corals by more than a third. So this is quite concerning and alarming. But against this backdrop, um, the Coral Initiative, Restoration Initiative, was undertaken to really improve the genetic uh, stock diversity of corals. Um, for, of those that survived the wide band, the, uh, the Stagon and the Elkons were some of the most resistant to the disease. Uh, so the idea is to collect genetic stocks from different localities, grow them in a nursery, and subsequently outplant them on the existing reef uh, so that these reefs can now become more genetically diverse and you can promote sexual reproduction between corals. So against that, you're going to create more genetic diversity. So should there be any outbreaks of these kinds of diseases in the future, we have a better assurance or higher resistance from a wider genetic diversity. We are now in the process of working via a public-private partnership funded in part by GIZ and Sandals Foundation uh, to actually look at a sustainable financing mechanism that would allow us to, um, to continue to pay the coral gardeners even at the end of this project.